Happy Real Days, ghouls and goblins. Welcome back to Really Scared, going live on Saturday night for a very freaky and festive watch along. Here I am once again with Connor, the world's most pissed off snow cone. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm back. I'm back. I'm really scared. Yeah. Uh, took an episode off, but I'm back and better than ever. We missed you on Thursday, having been swallowed by the giant Christmas clown worm. You know what? You handled it really well by yourself. So props to you. Thanks. I appreciate that. It was a very weird, uh, weird ASMR esque recording session for me. It was. Yeah. I, it, it was all right. You know, in, in in times of emergency, it was all right. But I'm very happy that you're back, and we are in the swing of things here. Yeah. Um, and not just for any old plane. Really scared. We got a hell of a treat tonight. You know, we're doing our holiday horror marathon. Where we're talking only about Christmas themed horror films all year. We're not just going to talk about one tonight. We're going to watch one. We're going to watch one. And None other this one has a lot of, you know, memories to both of us, shared memories, kind of, <laughs> even though yeah. we didn't really know it until we started becoming, you know, closer friends. Um, we both had like a shared experience with the VHS cover for this. Oh, movie. You, mean this you mean this one right here? <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> it's true. This one, a lot of a lot of nightmares with that VHS cover growing up. That I I oh, really I, I I looked. I wanted to try and like acquire one to show on the stream, like just the the real like holographic, mm -hmm. like lenticular effect of like nice snowman here. The Eternal, a bit scary snowman. <laughs> oh, it's got to be said, he never looks quite this scary. No, he doesn't. Looks like doesn't this. Really have <laughs> <laughs> I love it, though. I love it. Yeah. He's definitely closer in appearance to Michael Keaton's Jack Frost. Yeah, honestly, very similar. Which, Michael Keaton's Jack Frost, pretty scary, too. Maybe not so intentionally, yeah. but kind of a disturbing film. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're going to be watching Jack Frost tonight. Uh, drop back in 1997. It, it's true. It's kind of come up in the the history and the run of the show. We talked about this movie before. So when the idea of watching one of these movies live was proposed, that one was like top of the list. We had yeah. to watch Jack Frost. We had to experience this together and face our fears uh, head on. Um, so this is going to be great. It's going to run just like if you join us for the Twilight Marathon, it's going to run like that, but at about a tenth of the run time. Um, I've got the, of course, the timer behind me. So if you're at home and like you have any technical issues or if somebody joins late, I'll hit this at the same time as we hit play. So we'd be able to sync it up just fine and stay in sync with us. Um, yep. Connor's posting it right now. We also have an Amazon watch party link makes it so much easier. You just click that and all you got to do is sit back and enjoy the ride. Cause Connor's going to hit that play button and just going to start playing on your side. Um, so it makes it really streamlined and convenient, or you can just pop in your VHS copy. You can hit the, terrifying cover out pull it off the shelf and just pop that baby in the vcr and just just go for it all you gotta do is just hit play we're in a countdown all you gotta do is hit play at the same time as we do and you'll be good to go you'll be along for the ride on jack frost um really looking forward to this one uh because it ain't just you and i you yeah know? we have we have some special guests right yeah not just any guests but actual stars jack frost and we've got one with us right now. Gonna bring him in here. The great Rob the Bell. How are you, Rob? How's it going? How are you guys doing, guys? Fantastic. We're good. Thank you so much for joining for us for this. It's great to be here. I'm thrilled to <laughs> watch Jack Frost. You don't watch party. It's it's awesome. Do many people prompt you uh, to talk about Jack Frost? Uh, no, not, not that many. No, they, they actually don't. And usually when people, when people know that I was in Jack Frost, they figure that it's a Michael Keaton one. And <laughs> it's just, it did come out like that year or the next year afterwards. I don't know, yeah. I don't know how they dealt with the, the copyright with Jack Frost. I yeah. So exclusive, but they ended up doing it. But uh, no, no, I'm thrilled. It's great. Uh, and you're right. I heard you guys before talking about like the, the cover of the VHS is fucking great. I mean, it's really, yeah. wow, that monster is super scary you know and then you look at the real one and it's like you know super cheesy it's, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it i love it it's kind of charming in its own way uh totally oh yeah 
<laughs> yeah, we're we're going to be joined hopefully at some point soon here by uh, as well Stephen Mendel, sure. who's also in the film. Yeah. Um, not sure where he is. He's out there, out there somewhere in the cold. Hopefully, he'll come in and join us um, shortly. You know, there was a Jack Frost two as well. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, the fact that that exists is you know I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, I think he went like Hawaiian for that or something. I don't know. Yeah, because the the cover for that one, he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> like, of, of course, why not? I believe he has like snowman offspring as well. I've seen it before, not recently, but I've seen the sequel before. I believe he has little children. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> they didn't bring it back for that one. It was their loss. Yeah, exactly. Well, I I was thoroughly destroyed, but I don't <laughs> I don't want to give anything away. It's shit. But uh, anyways, it'll come <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Jack Frost spoilers, of course. For yeah, yeah. Everybody who's experiencing this for the first time. What a great way to experience this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, time um when did you guys first see this movie when it came out where you, you guys were like five i don't i didn't i didn't watch it when i i was five when this came out so you nailed it on the money there um i didn't watch it right when it came out but it was the experience that connor and i have apparently shared where like going to blockbuster and this one would be sitting on the shelf yeah. and it was like you know it's on your left you're walking up to it and it, it seriously it worked it was like nice snowman you come up to it, it changes before your eyes. It yeah, it yeah. I, I would speed walk past it walking down the <laughs> aisle because I was like, I don't want to look at that cover. Um, I was probably like 10 when I finally was like, all right, I'm going to watch this movie. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's like about the time my grandpa started like really forcing me to watch terrifying movies nice. and like scaring me to death. So at that point, I was kind of desensitized. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to watch it. <laughs> and 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 did it really scare you or were you what, what, what um i remember being scared when i was younger and then i watched it again recently and i was like i don't know why i was ever scared of this this is hilarious <laughs> i think by the time i got around to seeing it yeah i was i was old enough to no longer be scared of it um had i seen this when i was five it would have totally ruined my life i yeah. think <laughs> yeah. terrified I, I think also in addition to the the picture on the front, I think one of the shots on the back is the scene with Shannon Elizabeth towards the end, which we'll obviously see tonight. But yeah. that again, that was just too much. Over <laughs> overloaded my my small innocent brain. So yeah, ha have a have a weird history with uh with Jack Frost. So we're we're getting to confront those fears tonight. Yeah, well that's a good thing. <laughs> good thing to do in a group though, too, because then you can really you can share. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and, I, and I, I perhaps Rob, you will be facing some, some, some repressed demons as well as you face Jack Frost. I'm going to get a lot of closure after this. <laughs> when that. was the when was the last time you, if if you had to guess, that you've actually watched this movie? Um, if I had to guess, I would say so. It's been 25 years. I would say it's about 23 years ago. And then I, I didn't, well, I was watching it with a couple of friends who we didn't, we didn't get through the whole thing. That's all I say. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, but, but, but I watched the whole thing myself probably 23 years ago and I haven't seen it since then. I mean, I, wow. I little bits and pieces, but I haven't watched, watched the whole thing through. It's been a long time. So, you know, we, 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 we um, filmed this. I had actually just gotten married and I, uh, 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 in 94, drove up down to L.A. Uh, it's my now ex-wife in, in Vancouver. We got there. And a week afterwards, a week after she got to L.A., I took off to go shoot this movie in Big Bear. Uh, and it was the winter and there's normally tons of snow in there. And, and there was no snow on the ground at all that winter. It was completely dry, nothing at all. And so to add to the this movie is that all so, the is fake. I mean, everything was fake. So, uh, uh, you know, so we went to this great resort, ski resort place for snow and there was nothing there, which was too bad. It's kind, of, <laughs> it kind of bummer. It was the first time in like 25 years there was no snow in January. But yeah, that, that's something that I was going to point out when we're watching it is like it's clearly... Fake. It's not, yeah, clearly fake snow. <laughs> so that plays into the whole kind of motif. But yes, it was fake snow. So some of it was created and then it was just fake. And it was just, it, mm -hmm. it, it was such a, 
you know, it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe the first year in 25 that there hasn't been real snow in Big Bear. But that's what it was. That's what we that was a sign of things to come. Well, well, Rob, I know we, we won't have you all night, which is perfectly fine. We appreciate any amount of time you're willing to sit down with two weirdos and watch Jack Frost. So yeah. um, we'll, we'll go ahead and hit play. Hopefully Steven will join us before too long. I just went ahead and shot him the link again. Hopefully he'll, he'll receive that message. Um, we'll go ahead and hit play. Rob, you've got your copy yeah. queued up. Yeah. Should I hit it now? We'll, we'll count it down. Oh, I'm gonna oh, hit the I timer it. too. Okay. And, and I, are you using the Connor's watch party? I, I would like to, but it's still not allowing me. It's no problem. Or against Canadian. Okay. Okay. I was, okay. No problem. All right. So I'm going to count it down. Yeah. And then we'll all hit play simultaneously. So we're going Jack Frost in three, two, one, play. All right. Oh, wow. We all in action? Yep. Perfect. This one, kind of a cold open, too. No pun intended. Like it just gets right into it. Yeah. No, uh, no, like studio titles. I, I know this this tree sequence tur turns into the credits, yeah, but it, it's so abrupt, just like you get what you asked for. It never really comes back to this, right? Oh, like to revisit it, right? The way that, like, yeah, like Princess Bride or something, yeah. Oh, the framing device of the, yeah, yeah. the kid getting the story, yeah, it's never like called back upon at this all is, during the This is kind of creepy, it's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we never really figure out who these folks are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's I I I kind of had forgotten about this framing device by the end of the movie because so much happens. But that, that's a good point. Is this are we is this real or is this just a cautionary tale? Right. There's Rob's name on the yeah, ornament, and they spelled my name completely wrong. They got a space. It's spelled, <laughs> they fucked it up. It's like on <laughs> check with somebody, can't you? It's like. Uh. So Rob, I am curious, like what was the, if you can even recall, what was the process like becoming a part of this film? Like, how did you get involved in this? Uh, I think there was a, just a regular audition that I had in LA and, um, and it was Michael Cooney, Michael Cooney, yeah, uh, um, who wrote and directed it. And um, mm. so regular audition and a callback and with the director and producer and, you know, you kind of get into it. And, and when you first read it, it's, it's really, it's, it's got a great, sardonic uh kind of a witty undercurrent of a bunch of things and it seemed like okay it's gonna be it's I, you know it's 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 what it is but it's got a lot of promise uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a you, also like right as an actor and as a young actor it's like uh, i don't care what i'm doing i'm gonna do whatever it is but yeah. it seemed like it'd be kind of fun i actually ended up doing another movie with him later um as well but uh so yeah, so I just auditioned and got the gig and and actually there had been a huge commercial, uh, I think it was like a, a British Air uh, commercial that I booked that was shot in, uh, in some ski country and I ended up having to, it was going to be a big international commercial, we shot and then they fucked up the commercial and they said, okay, we're going to do it again in two months and it's going to be all over the place, you're going to make so much money, it's going to be fantastic and it's like, well, no, but I, I, I got this gig, so I... I had this gig. Uh, I can't ever I'm not going to ever turn down a gig, and you know, yeah. you do that. Um, so that was it. It was just like I auditioned, call back, got the role, and excited to, you know, be up in Big Bear and shoot for three weeks or whatever it was, two weeks, three weeks. So it was fun. It was it was definitely fun working on it. I, I did have a good time with it. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> I can believe that. I can believe that this had to have been a blast to make. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it is. <laughs> well here yeah i mean i mean it's great you know you've got like a, a serial killer and a <laughs> snowstorm it's, it's and then there's the chemicals right like it's the crazy it's, <laughs> it, it, it's crazy kind of combination of how it but this is good to see the transformation to see him be created it's it's a very it's like a very silver age comic book thing like i don't know you could say with some chemicals there's snow he's a snowman now <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna like spend time figuring out how that works. You just have to roll with it. Okay, so he was gonna be killed, right? So he's gonna be killed, and then it's a it's a like a chemical. It is like some kind of like a poisonous chemical truck. Yeah, it's some sort of like experimental government 
Kemba, I, I don't know if they, I, I did just rewatch this uh, this morning. I don't know if they say Blake. You're like, prepare. You, you, it's, you, it's your preparing. So that's yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. I, have to, I, I don't want to lose it here on stream. That'd be very yeah, embarrassing. Yeah. So I just got to keep it composed. Yeah. I think it's some sort of top secret government chemical. I'm not sure like what they were intending it for other than this. Yeah. So in that part where he smells the smoke and he's like filtered. Right. Um, I don't know why he says that because he can see that it's a filtered cigarette. <laughs> Maybe it's so the other guy's not very impressed. You could tell by the, the smell, but he can clearly see the cigarette. <laughs> yeah. He's got a, he's got kind of a Hannibal Lecter thing going on, right? He's got like a heightened sense of Everything. smell and sight, apparently. <laughs> he's got heightened senses of all types. And I think it is his I don't do they say is Jack Frost his nickname or his name is his name just Jack Frost? I think it was his name. Like like he's not like, like, it's his real name. Happens. It's coincidental that. Yeah. There is. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. It, it was fate. He had to become a snowman with a name like that. Oh, that's good too. I forgot that. That's that's very good. So, <laughs> so it's 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 a three way thing because it's the serial killer, the chemical, and then the snowstorm, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah, genetic research chemicals. Yeah, because if that happened in the summer, you're not getting a monster. It's just gonna be yeah. yeah. That's you're a good point. a melted human. Yeah, it's just because it's winter. <laughs> That's a, I like the the proposal here of like, well, you just throw this stuff on a guy, and whatever he's around, he's gonna become one of those. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that, that's what happens in this situation. Uh, I lo I love that too. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I with, with the what was the like on set? Was the intention like, oh, we're going to make like a, a genuinely scary film, or was everybody pretty aware of like how kind of campy and, and, and over the top this was? Um, everybody was absolutely aware of how campy and over the top it was, but the notion wasn't to make it. You can't make a show camping over the top by playing camping over the top. You got to play it straight. Mm -hmm. You try to play it straight. I don't know that it was really successful in this because you try to play the situations that you're given and try to do it for real, but they're so over the top that it pulls it out. But mm -hmm. you, uh, you want to give some, you got to play it straight. You have to protect yourself in some way. No, you got to, you got to play it straight. You got to, you got to do that. But people were aware of what it was. Uh, absolutely. Um, it's just that. Anyways, I I don't want to I, I don't want to cloud it for anybody. Yet. People are ex experiencing it on their own here. <laughs> uh, oh, he's great. Yeah. His his delivery is a little is a little Nicholson too. I feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Told me totally what that was. Here he goes. Oh no, the genetic chemicals. That's it. <laughs> this is good too. Yeah. That's no, that's good. That's, yeah. that's great. That's horrible. His skin is melting. Yeah, you get kind of this Cronenberg's fly transformation. Now, so, well, Let's just wait here. <laughs> that looks good. This like weird rotted out body is very gross. Yeah, that's not that's that's not bad. And this and there was a lot of I mean, this is some vis effects, but there was a lot of they did a lot of stuff was practical, which was actually really great because it had to budget wise and you know practical effects. But practical effects can sometimes be the best, you know. And, and yeah, although you get these great this great CG cellular breakdown here. Yeah. Because <laughs> so it's interesting because I, I, I did the movie Watchmen. Yeah. Dr. Manhattan. We had the whole scene where he is in the the nuclear thing. And it's kind of not quite reminiscent of this part, but where he transforms and he becomes Dr. Manhattan. But he goes into a right. skeleton and then he gets reconstituted as Dr. Manhattan. And then he's a freak. Oh, there's. I hear what you're saying. Zack Snyder totally was influenced by this film. 
<laughs> I think it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was like his influence. It was. <laughs> it's like, I want to hit that tone. Well, it's weird because he, he in that scene, he was talking about it and he started making reference to Jack Frost to me. Like, I was like, hey. Was like, Wait, did he I, really? I was, no, 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 he didn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can believe that. Zack Snyder seems like a strange enough guy to perhaps watch pull this. Pull back, thing. pull back. Like, I was in the scene. Like, what's, <laughs> oh my God, you're transformational. I didn't even realize. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Chris was in both of them because he's, you know, he's the cop, so he was. He's the hero. Yeah, he's the hero. He's good too, though. I he, his whole thing gives me kind of this like small town, like Twin Peaks. Yeah, you know? yeah. He, yeah, he, uh, he, he's a very good actor. He's, he's great. Well, but um, uh, all these people had had were, were really good. It's just you, you got to make sense of it. But Chris is playing it. It's total small town. You're right. Twin Peaks is like it. All right, and this is him meeting Flesh and Blood Jack for the first time. Yeah. The arresting officer. <laughs> oh. Got his ass. He gave, he gave up pretty easily. Yeah, and the thing is, is like also, he I guess he he's just kind of a freak serial killer. He doesn't know that he's got. He doesn't know that he's a monster yet. I mean, he's a monster, but he doesn't know he's a a star. literal monster. Yeah. Right? The outside doesn't match the inside yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all coming back. Rob, were you or are you kind of a horror guy, or was or was this sort of uh, something di really different? I mean, obviously, it is something really different for you, but but um, yeah, I, I had. Oh, you mean like in terms of being and stuff, or being into horror? It, just just as a as a as a viewer, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not a total complete horror fan, but I do like really good horror stories. I mean, I, I I've always watched horror movies and stuff like that. Actually, it was in New Nightmare. Uh, That's right. Yeah. Which was a kick. I mean, just uh, uh, because it was with Wes Craven, which was really. Yeah. I mean, because he, he came back after doing, after not doing a bunch of the new night, uh, the mm -hmm. nightmare, and he came back, and then that was one where it was the real people who were replicating what happened in real life, and like in the script, there was an earthquake, and while we were shooting, there was the real earthquake in L.A., and it was. Uh, so no, not not a complete genre, there, Steve. Uh, so not a, a, a major horror kind of freak, but I love horror movies. I, I really like it. I, I watch horror more than I do sci-fi, I guess, which I do probably more sci-fi than horror, but mm -hmm. yeah. But this was, this was, I, I, this is a kick to do shit like this, you know? I mean, it's mm -hmm. really, anyways, so no, a, li a little bit of a horror fan. I mean, I like yeah. horror movies. I we I I I almost I have to ask because obviously we you know this is the horror show we we always talk about horror movies obviously Wes Craven is like a is a is like a deity here yeah. around here that name what what was it like being directed by like the one of the like Mount Rushmore figures of horror he 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 was like such an unbelievably down to earth guy who was so kind and so simple in a way and he he would just he on set. He was just doing crossword puzzles. <laughs> and I'm like, what? He also acted in that, right? So he acted yeah. as a director in that. And I said, I was like, you're just so, like, what's up? Like, how come you're not? It's not like, and he said, I, I do all the prep ahead of time. He said, I just I just do all my work. Mm -hmm. so that when I come to set, it's not frantic and I'm low key and I'm just doing my stuff. And he just makes sure it all works. But he's already thought it all out. So it's yeah. He was just so mellow. It was incredible, uh, and but but also also really really kind. You know, I mean, you know, you work with directors who are total assholes, people who are not great and aren't, aren't accessible. But he was he made himself accessible. It wasn't like oh come and talk to me and ask me anything you want. But it was like we're working on the scene, and you know, and he's hanging out and he's available. So it was really 
a treat. It was really, really a special time. I felt just mm -hmm. like honored to be able to be able to work with this guy mm -hmm. and just think, cause you're right. Cause it, you know, even at, at that time, I and mean, it's like, he's a fucking legend. It's, it's great. Yeah. So it was wonderful. It was yeah. really, really great. That's fantastic. I've, I've never heard any, like any bad things about Wes Craven. Like his reputation definitely is, is so solid and reputable and, yeah, that's great to hear. I, mean, I think it comes across in his work too. You know, he was so so genuinely in love with with horror and monsters and the yeah. macabre and telling yeah. those types of stories. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, and he was and he was also into into this notion of like you know the, uh, the teens of of <laughs> this notion of like the the morality tale of like teens have sex then they get killed. You know, <laughs> it's like, like it's just this whole. He, he, it's not like he believed he wasn't a puritan or anything like that. But he, yeah, he just really saw that. Like it was just like you could just set it up. It's like mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 licentiousness or just regular teen activity of teen sexuality has to be punished. He, it, not that he believed in it, but it just seemed to you know make sense. It was good storytelling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, and we get. I mean, we just saw Shannon Elizabeth for the first time here. Right. We, that echoes in this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and no spoilers for those who are. Yes. Fresh to Jack Frost, but exactly. that definitely shows up here. Yeah. Um, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, the snow looks very. Oh yeah, so all of that. It's just, it, can you imagine though, like if it was just all of that, like on the ground? You see, there's like no snow on the ground. There's zero because there wasn't even <laughs> enough budget to make even enough fake snow. You couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't create it, so it's like oh, this fake sculpture, but like. What a bummer. You're planning this whole thing. It's normally tons of snow, like tons of snow. It's like, uh, it's a fucking ski resort. <laughs> There's nothing there. It's like, oh man. Okay. You know, unseasonably warm. It's probably, it's probably never been, look at this. Look at the street. <laughs> it's yeah. only in that yard. Yeah. It's, in that. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's not even on the roof. I love how he acts like he's going to throw that snowball at just someone driving by. Oh, he's <laughs> a cop. He's the, he's the everybody respects him, you know. He's the the hero of this little podunk town. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, Chris is Chris is. <laughs> <laughs> he's haunted. <laughs> but Chris is Chris is great, man. He he does just he's just he's just playing it straight. Yeah, which I think you're right. I think. You have to uh, have that restraint and things like this because if you go too big, it's like the difference between being in on the joke and being the joke, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. I say all that now. I, I, I don't remember anything that I did in this, so we'll see what happens because I think it's pretty <laughs> fucking absurd. Oh, my God, it's just so cheesy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pretty... There's a lot going on. Like, it's definitely a, a more complex plot. Like, the... Where you have to go to figure out how a snowman serial killer happens is coming up with like this shady, like X Files ish government agency, which which yeah. you were in X Files, if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, it was the it was this seventh sixth seventh episode counting the pilot in the first season. Yeah, um, uh, Eve. What was it? Uh, not Eve. Uh, it was uh, uh, no, no, no. I, I got to remember the name of it. But yes, yes, I was in the first season, and and the first, and when I was in that shot in Vancouver, and I was living in L.A., and it was a great gig because it shot. We started on a Friday, and then it was two weekends, right? So I had two weekends to hang out on the Monday, but on the first, um, uh, I got there on the Friday, and we, and so the following Friday that night was the first episode of X Files was airing. It was the pilot episode airing on television, right on Fox Network. And there's a pride of Briscoe County started first and then it was X-Files, but they stopped production and rolled out these, because it was like 93 or 92 or something like that and rolled out these big fucking t television, you know, big, whatever, 30 inch television screens on rollers. And we stopped production to watch the episode on television, you know, on Fox. It was like, Hey, mm -hmm. let's watch the pilot. And cause it wasn't a phenomenon. It was just a, a great gig. Like, Oh yeah, I'm going up to two weeks to, to Vancouver. And so we watched the show. It was super cool. And then stopped and we kept shooting and that was it, yeah. you know? So it was, it was, it was great, you know, and then it became what it became. But uh, at that time mm -hmm. it was just like, ah, it's the sixth episode of a new series. So Yeah. Yeah. This is a good shot here with the, the rocking yeah. here. 
It's really good. Again, kind of a there's 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 definitely yeah because Twin Peaks was out by now. I feel like that definitely was some sort of influence because or like even Fargo or something. Um, mm -hmm. th this feels very no, no yeah I mean for, yeah Fargo yeah because I mean Fargo wasn't I don't think Fargo was out at this point the original movie was it. Yeah, it might not have been. And if, if it wasn't, then it might have been. But you're, but you're absolutely it was right. Clearly it's, influenced it's, it's, by Jack Frost. Totally yeah, Jack Frost legacy continues. Yeah, no, it's, and that's not bad. The the practical, yeah, these these little. I love the practical effects in this. This this frozen body look, looks great. Yeah, they had to do all of that. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of things coming up, which yeah, which are practical, which are really really well done and simple, and cheap. Um, yeah. Oh, he's patching to the FBI. I think Rob's coming up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. I'm... <laughs> really... Hey, Steven. Steven, who should hopefully be joining us at some point this evening. Also, I love the name of the town, Snowminton. Snowminton. <laughs> <laughs> and he's great too. You're right, Rob. He's it's he's Steve. He's taking it so seriously. Yes. <laughs> so earnest. Very earnest. <laughs> serious shit. How can you not take this? <laughs> right, there you are. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> uh, really riled up. So you're 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 the you're the expert here on what's happening. Yes. <laughs> Love it, cock the gun. So the implication is this was on purpose. Yeah, because he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, the, I mean, it, it raises the question of like, what? I, I, I did you read that as it happened on purpose? Did I read oh, that just now? Yes, I thought okay. it was an accident until just now because he said your guinea pig turned out to be a homicidal maniac. I, I think maybe I. But that's the question of like, what was that? What was that juice for initially? If if not this, where was it going? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm just trying to defend my character, but I, I think that it's mistaken. No, it wasn't like it wasn't a purposeful thing. It was just, you know, maybe he should have been the, the experiment. The experiment had to do with the other shit, not Jack. The fact that like it combined with a serial killer, I couldn't predict that. That's like, you know, that's out of my. That's not true. <laughs> it's not true at all. No, it's totally, there was a scientific experiment which went wrong, but it wasn't because it's okay. You know, who could predict that that's going to happen? Yeah. It was like one in a hundred billion, you know? It's an act of God. Um, we've got El Spooky Ghost in the chat. He wants to know Was Jillian Anderson nice to you? She was, actually. She was very <laughs> nice. No, we, 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 it wasn't, I can't say it was a date, but she hadn't ever been on a, that was like her first TV show. She had been kind of a punk rocker and had done like a play or two in England, or I mean, in, in New York, I think. And then, she came there so like she was she was totally she was excited as hell to be even like on a gig like on a regular gig and mm -hmm. she was very very nice super nice yeah and now she's you know margaret thatcher it's crazy <laughs> right. yeah right? she's had an amazing career beyond x files like she mm -hmm. totally has oh yeah and she's been in england now for uh, you know a, a long time he heard elizabeth mcgovern have both like ended up relocating to London and doing tons of great shit. But the fact that she's Maggie Thatcher, I actually haven't seen the crown yet. I've seen like bits and pieces. I haven't seen her in the crown, but people say she's phenomenal. Have you yeah. I heard this new season is, is really good. Yeah. So people say it was like, like transportive her being, you know, Thatcher. All right. We got this down there. Sorry. <laughs> the town's in arms over this. Totally. I forgot. Is she, is she like the, is she like the office? Who is she? She, yeah, she, yeah. She she's runs like the, uh, 
the police the station like she's administrator. Yeah. But she's not a cop. She's just a like the dispatch. Like answers the dispatch calls. Yeah, she's, she's in control. <laughs> I I, I love I do love like small town crime stories. It's funny, like this is this is totally working, and you would never really be able to figure out where this was going yet if you were just going mm -hmm. purely blind. Yeah. Even with Jack Frost being disintegrated by genetic juice. <laughs> now, was that like hairspray? She just sprayed in his, in his face? Yes, I believe so. <laughs> kind of a flirtatious gesture, but that would like really fuck your eyes up. <laughs> And you know, you you doubt the the filmmaking of this, but that's kind of a, a Chekhov's hairspray. That comes back later. <laughs> it's foreshadowing. <laughs> Every detail is very considered. So you did you did watch this recently, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to be fresh on this today. <laughs> here we go. He's building it. Yeah, it gets pretty gruesome here. In well, yeah, and he kills in so many different ways. Oh, I don't want to give that away. Yeah. He... <laughs> It's good because it mixes it up. Yeah, they definitely achieved that kind of like slasher. You got to put them down ten different ways before yeah. it begins. Yeah, that's that's good. And you don't really know the rules of like how he works, right? I don't think even after you see the movie, do you know what how it really works? But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. that's you get these brilliant '90s bullies. Yeah, that's like, what's the one with the, um, he just got bullied out of his own front lawn. Snow bullies. Yeah. What a nerd. <laughs> Sled bullies, Connor. Remember Silent Night Deadly? Yeah. Sled yeah. Bullies in that too. Which one? Sled bullies coming back. Uh, we went, one of the movies we watched this month was Silent Night Deadly Night. Oh. And there's, there's, sled bullies. there's some sled thieves in that. Very villainous. And they're in classic sleds, too. It's great. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> oh, man. Shouldn't have gone classic sled. And I do love you'll you'll obviously see it even better throughout the movie, but I love once you actually see the snowman moving around. It's got kind of this I don't know what the right like plush almost like Barney esque fabric to it when he like picks things up. You know, you can very clearly see it's not a snowy icy texture. It's very like mittens. Mm -hmm. This family gets put through the ringer. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on. If it, if that really happened, that would be awful. Your kid. It, they, yeah, they almost don't. They almost don't uh, freak out enough. Mm -hmm. They they kind of try to get back to normal with like before sundown. Yeah. <laughs> I do love. I love the juxtaposition of a Christmas movie and a horror movie. I'm, I, I, I'm really coming to learn that as we are doing these films this month. I love. You wouldn't think it would work, but it does, huh? It works. <laughs> Hallmark should move into the Christmas. Yeah, they've done enough of the um, romantic comedy holiday movies. Yeah. Like, just go ahead and move into the. Just a little oh, business, just like 10%. And it, it could just yeah. try to do it. 
what would be brilliant is if they I, I, every year they don't they put out like dozens of Hallmark movies. Like there were this time of year, they put out literally dozens. I'm yeah, like, I think there's probably fifty a year or something. Yeah, they they should do one, but they don't give it away in the marketing or anything. They just do one. It's very typical setup, and then like halfway through, it just becomes slasher with no warning, and you're just you know just freaks everyone out super bad. That would be brilliant. It would be totally brilliant. It would be fantastic. Or even if someone did like a. Mercury Theater on the air, you know, like the, um, you know, and they pretended like it was Hallmark and you kind of think and you, and, and then they do that, but you're not sure, but that would be great to do that. Absolutely. People just start getting axed. <laughs> like so many in one scene, all of a sudden there's like 15 people. Who are asked, <laughs> what the fuck? Where did that come from? That'd be a phenomenon. Like everybody's talking about this lifetime Colonel Sanders thing. Have you seen this, Rob? <laughs> no. You haven't seen lifetime. Sometime this month, I don't know the day, they're putting out a, like, it's very tropey lifetime, like, sort of romance novel with, like, yeah. a, a killer thing, but it's starring Mario Lopez as Colonel Sanders. Oh, my God. I, I love the ransom notes. Oh, this? Like, oh. Like, you gotta love a good ransom note. I don't get, I don't, I, I don't get it, but it's, it's yeah, I don't, I don't get it either because there's no ransom and you know who they're coming from. <laughs> they're signed. They're signed. That's a good point. He's cutting out his name. Yeah. <laughs> In the magazine, he's putting his name on it though. I didn't even think of that. That's a good point. Like that took more work. It's like we're not avoiding together. Yeah. anything. Yeah. That just means you're very confident in your brand. You're like, I I am like I am a serial killer. I want to embrace all the like the iconography of being one. But yeah, mm -hmm. but, I, but you know who I am. I'll take credit for it. I'm scare you anyways. Let's see, Hallmark. Can you stare at Black Christmas from 2006? Is, is Lacey... Is she, so she's in a lot of Hallmark films, huh? That'd be good, too. Lacey, Lacey, Lacey has been in a lot of Hallmark films? I guess so. I'm not I'm not as familiar as I'd like to be with the... Uh, yeah, the I don't know either. I know a lot of them shoot in Vancouver, but I've actually never been in one, so I have no idea. That's a shame. Would you like to be in one? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Can we start a social media campaign? So, so badly. Um, but I was just in a Lifetime movie that I shot last year, but it's a true crime Lifetime movie, which is great. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, oh, she was great. Oh my God. I just remembered. Oh, this, sorry, I won't say anything. That's, <laughs> that's one of the best scenes coming up. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anybody who's yeah. watching, you got to stick around because some good shit is happening. This was the one where, like, she's ready to go out on a date, and her brother just got decapitated. And I'm like, yeah, that's not that unreasonable that her dad would be very upset about that. <laughs> yeah, but she's got a date, you know. So you know, very sad, but I'm leaving. <laughs> very visceral. What happened? There you go. I see now because she, you know, she's <laughs> very upset. Totally. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you like reset back to zero after your son is murdered by a sledding accident. Y yeah, and, and just uh, <laughs> just. Well, they think he was murdered, so that's even worse. Yeah, you should, yeah, you should be even more upset. Oh, here we go. Here's where it begins. This is great. This reminded me of that that Christmas Office episode where like Jim thinks Dwight's in a snowman. Oh, right. and There's all those snowmen, <laughs> and Dwight's just on the roof watching. <laughs> <laughs> and I love this reveal because again, yeah, you like pop in the VHS. It's got that very terrifying monster, and this is where you really, for the first time, actually find out what you've what you, <laughs> you've bargained for. That's called bait and switch. <laughs> it's kind of a clickbait precursor, but you got to sell your movie, right? <laughs> I bet it got a lot of blockbuster rentals. That's right. Oh. <laughs> the voice is so good, too. <laughs> I 
the kills are good in this too. You have when you do uh, these kinds of you know, holiday things, like you got to find those sort of themed murders, those kill scenes. <laughs> I do like when his mouth splits open and those like icicle teeth come in. I think that looks uh -huh. good. You Christ loathing dog. That's a great line. <laughs> I'm going to start calling people Christ loathing dogs. Christ loathing. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! Oh! How the fuck? <laughs> I love puns. Yeah, love a killer with dad jokes. I only asked you for a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, oh. oh yeah, because he he does that. He transforms into the water sometimes and just mm -hmm. reconstitutes. It's a, it's a good power to have. He can get yeah. anywhere. Yeah, it's it's not completely thought out, but it's cool. <laughs> it's like a super. It is like a superpower where it's like, uh, oh, this is uh, this is the best. Yeah, this is this is probably this is probably the the best kill. Yeah, it's it's delightful. <laughs> So mean spirited too. That he that he targets this family for no real reason. Yeah, it's just horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There is really no reason behind these. No, because well, these first three kills. He's a psycho. He's a, he's is sick luck. He's got to finish the job, I guess. He got that's one. Rob. <laughs> Uh oh. 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 <laughs> yeah, this is good. <laughs> the the big puffy arms. Oh, that's the oh, I love that. <laughs> oh. The push in is good. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Crush it in her mouth. Oh my god. Just like giving her an ornament swirly. Oh my god, look at that! That's crazy. That's just bad doll. She always wanted to be the angel on the tree. Uh, I also yeah. love the whimsical music yeah, that played totally. with it. It's got kind of that Hawaiian flavor too, which is funny because it's for some reason the sequel that gets tropical. There it is, that Barney arm. <laughs> That's all I could think of. It's, so yeah, there might have been somebody actually like walking around in a snowman suit, huh? Obviously, sometimes it's like a prop, but other times there's clearly somebody that's puppeteering it. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't know if, it, is it uh, McDonald who was the plays the guy when he's the killer, but I don't yeah. know if he has anything to do with did he have anything to do with the monster? I think I don't I don't recall the name unfortunately, but when I watched this last, I think there is a separate credit for the act like at as the voice and then as the, the physical the act. or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. He's munching Pez. Love it. Love love the the podunk cops. They're calling in the big dogs. Oh, there he is. There's Steven. <laughs> I 
There you are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the three of you guys kind of are the ensemble like hero crew that needs to take this guy down <laughs> you're the crack team squad totally oh yeah <laughs> I think Steve is really good. I think he's, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Al Alport does it. Alport does a great job. Not Steve Alport, it's Steve Mendel and then um, Alport. <laughs> that was the same shot from, oh, it is. Obviously, there they go again. <laughs> You get to do a little crime scene interior. Oh, yeah, so that they did. That was like just they set up a little pool with a little thing underneath. Uh, because they had a camera underneath, which was super cheap little effect, but it's... It's a neat shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, there's definitely some neat little like creative touches of like some finesse and figuring out how you're going <laughs> to... Tell something like this, obviously on a on a modest budget too. Yeah, very modest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> it just froze right there. It's always a great horror movie killed like stuff going down the mouth is yeah. very unsettling what with the axe yeah yeah oh yeah that was totally like and, and like you would think of it, the axe was down there but it was like the other way with <laughs> Rob, you mentioned uh, Watchmen. You were also in um, you were in Smallville and Lois and Clark. Do I have that right? You kind of you kind of beat the rest of the world to the punch on the like the superhero production craze. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> yeah the small yeah, yeah Lois and Clark was just one episode. Smallville was about three of them up here, which was fun. Um, I played a cunning linguist in that one, so um, that was that was kind of a good. But yeah, no, it's fun. It was fun to to do both of those. Yeah, I think there's only been a couple of people who have ever been in both of those. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of those shows. But yeah, no, it was good. That was uh, one was in L.A. and one was in Vancouver. And now there's another Superman, right? I mean, there's a bunch of Superman shit shooting up here. It's all the yeah. all the CW superhero, all the DC stuff is up here, mm -hmm. which is kind of wild. Were you or or are you a, a comic book guy? Uh, I was when I was a kid. I had a lot of yeah. stuff. I, I was really, uh, I, I I was, I, and I was actually a, a, a much more like it was DC versus Marvel. I guess I was I was a DC fan. I don't, I don't know where that came out of, but I was totally into DC. Although like now, I know my my uh, uh, one of my kids seems to be quite heavily into Marvel, which is you know. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was totally. I was I was DC. So I had a big comic book collection until I was about 13 or so and then it kind of dropped off but mm -hmm. yeah I loved all that shit it was just great I mean there was also like there was Plastic Man and there was yeah. a bunch of obscure DC guys because because DC was always these creatures like Marvel had sometimes there was like it was an aberration but a lot of times it was 
humans that had some tweak, but like these actually it was a kind of a mixed thing, wasn't it? Because Plastic Man was Plastic Man, but then Batman was just a human who fought yeah. tough. So I was sort of all mixed up. But yeah, I also like the the shadow. Did you ever the shadow oh, yeah. was DC? Because mm -hmm. that was an old radio show. I was really into old radio shows when I was a kid, like shows from the 30s and 40s and 50s. So when I was like 12, 13, 14, there was all these old radio shows. And and there was a lot of those comic book stuff as well. But The Shadow was was great. And Orson Welles was actually played The Shadow for a while. Hmm. Uh, Lamar Cranston was the, uh, the real creature of that. Were you guys uh, DC or Marvel? I, I to this day am am very much a DC guy. I'm I'm still out there like buying the weekly single issues and things. Oh, you like are. Oh. Yeah, I'm so, I go but I I dip back in. Yeah, I I dip back in once in a while because it can be a very expensive habit. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I've always been a very big Batman guy. Growing up, I I think I was more. I was definitely a Spider Man guy growing up. Yeah. Which I think I think a lot of people yeah. are. You know, it's the, that's the easiest character to connect to when you're growing up because yeah. so much of that character is kind of a coming of age thing but um i'm i'm definitely more of a, a dc comic book guy um and a batman guy. obviously with the marvel movies now everybody's kind of a, of a marvel person right yeah, yeah, yeah i think i was DC always TV. marvel i'm sorry what were you saying uh i was always marvel growing up oh, um were? yeah spider-man hulk um all that stuff so yeah, Marvel. I, I think you were. I think you you touched on it, Rob. Mar Marvel's kind of like these are mostly. It's mostly like characters who start out as kind of an everyday person or a yeah, relatively yeah. normal person who have to adapt and become these great characters. Where like DC feels a lot more like akin to sort of ancient mythology and like godlike figures. Yeah, yeah. And these every story is a huge story. You know, yeah. gods and monsters. Yeah, yeah, I think so. But is it like I, cause I don't I don't collect anymore at all, but I know that there's collect, you know, like digitally and stuff in comics. But I mean, there was just something when I was a kid with having the real comic books, like you said, you either subscribe to it or you'd go and you buy the copies. So you said you still buy hard copies, right? You buy. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, I think that's it. when it's, it's in your hands and it's pulp. It's it's something. It's a different thing. It, it really is. And it's, I mean, it's the same with, you know, your Baseball traditional card. novels too, or yeah, or trading oh, yeah. cards or any collectible thing, you know, yeah. it's, and, and everything, I mean, everything's going, you know, more virtually oriented. That's just the way of the world. Obviously digital comics is the thing now. And um, I mean, it's not a, it, it, it's still nice to read them that way, but I mean, I, I definitely prefer it. The only downside to buying the real thing is like, you got to find a place to put all those things right. after you're done reading them. And I um, <laughs> love that him in the car. I love I love that he's driving. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's pretty expressive right there. You know? Yeah, it's 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 cheesy, but he's expressive. So <laughs> those little twig eyebrows are doing a lot of work. Yeah, I think it worked. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, I, I still love getting the single issues. I mean, obviously, especially this year, you know, the brick and mortar comic book store is not a thriving industry. Yeah, you know they're. They're more often than not independently owned sort of mom and pop operations. So, you know, when you find a good one, I think it, it's good to support it whenever you can. Yeah, I agree. I think there's only about two here in, that was probably more, but two main ones in, in Vancouver and stuff. But, but the people who work in those places know everything about everything. Yeah. It, it can be intimidating going in there and like, you, you, even if even as somebody who's been reading them pretty frequently through your whole life, you still feel like a, a rookie coming in there. You yeah. feel like new, the new kid in school when you try to communicate. Everybody just knows it's their whole livelihood. <laughs> the water can't let that water get in. So are you guys doing a different horror holiday movie every Saturday? Is that what you guys well, do? So we ordinarily broadcast on Thursday. The, the, we don't usually the, the watch along thing is kind of a special occasion. We don't yeah. do we don't do that every week. But yeah, every Thursday is when we do our ordinary show. We'll talk like about a couple like news items, you know, relative to horror film and 
and we'll and we usually will do a new release movie but this month yeah we've just been doing holiday horror um, we started with silent night deadly night um kind of a classic 80s santa slasher yeah no i, can, I don't know that that's that sounds really good it's very it's very ridiculous they've made like a ton of sequels it's you know it's become kind of a meme unto itself and yeah and then this past this week we 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 did Krampus the the, the newer movie the, the the great 2015 Krampus and the next week we'll be doing Gremlins which you know everybody okay. loves Gremlins and we're gonna close it out talking about Black Christmas but we're gonna talk about all three versions of it because oh, that's great a couple of times so we're gonna kind of compare and contrast. So you're gonna watch all of them like you did with the other series you did with the. Was it not the Harry Potter? What would you just watch all five? Oh, the Twilight oh, thing. Oh, no, yeah. mostly just watch ahead, and then we do this it, like kind of a traditional podcast. We just talk about them. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but, but yeah, no, the the like sitting down here and watching it as we're live is yeah. is it's kind of a special occasion. Oh, yeah. that's great. Which again, thank you so much for joining us. For well, that. I feel honored to be a part of it. No, it's really you guys are fantastic, <laughs> and it's it's a lot of fun and. You know, it's. it's. <laughs> I imagine, that, yeah, you don't probably get a lot of opportunities to revisit this very specific part of your career. Not, not this show. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> this is a first, but I appreciate it. And it's no, but it's 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 a blast. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna. That's that's great. I told you, <laughs> it's really good. We're we're honored. I think it's it's made a lot better by not just being Connor and I sitting here <laughs> watching Jack Frost. <laughs> To, <laughs> I think it definitely definitely spices it up a bit. <laughs> Which, speaking of spicing it up, yes, yeah. there you go. I never really understood why they break into the sheriff's house to do this. Makes it a lot more complicated than it needs to be to have a little. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> so why do they? I mean, I have I have absolutely no idea. So do you have any any logic? No, I don't think they explain. <laughs> She just wanted to break into the the sheriff's house to do this. Yeah, I I don't know if she's like a thrill seeker. Yeah, uh, she's obviously dealing a lot, you know. Her yeah, son, her brother just got decapitated that morning by a sled. <laughs> <laughs> can't can't do this at home. His parents are home. I don't know what his home life's like. So maybe you got to go somewhere. I don't know why you of all places you break into the, the sheriff's house. The sheriff's place. Yeah, that's that's the place. Yeah, because. Also, the town, the whole town's in peril. Because people are dying. <laughs> just, a, just a weird time to even get, you know, get your rocks off. I guess she can't really do it at her place because, wait, she doesn't even know her family's dead. She doesn't know her parents are dead. Yeah, that's true. And she never will know because she's about to. <laughs> <laughs> She'll true. never know. This was that's right. That's right. Because the last time we saw her, she was like, "Well, fuck you, Dad. I'm like, gonna take off, yeah. and do whatever I want in the sheriff's house." <laughs> now, Connor, you probably know offhand. This was this was before American Pie, right? Yes, this was a couple years before American Pie. Okay. So maybe Shannon Elizabeth isn't quite like a, a well known. No, I think this was her first film. Really? Yes. So you know, I think this movie is so much more influential than everybody gives it credit for that it's just like, wow, it was like a watchman, <laughs> I so many things that, you know, this is this is like the basis for it all. Yeah. Like young filmmakers were like, fuck man, Jack Frost. That's no, I mean, like even that, that's that's so subtle. That's a welcome yeah, poster. Uh, that's the American first... Idol thing, so there you go. Yeah, this was her first movie, and then she followed it up um, a year later with uh, Scary Movie. Oh, okay. And then the following year after that, she did American Pie. So she did this, and then Scary Movie, and then American Pie. So a like good three-year run, honestly. Yeah, no, that's a... That's a <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she starts off with a pretty, like, you know, campy horror thing before she becomes like this girl next door figure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love the singular carrot. It's, it's, it lets you know. It, it, sets, it, it sets a tone. It makes things tense because you're like, well, he, he's in so much danger and he doesn't know. This is something I, I don't think they really play with is he's about to pretty much consume Jack Frost. Hmm. Oh, that's why the carrot's in the freezer, because Jack Frost is in the freezer. 
you didn't get that the first time, I did you? Get it. I was just like, is that foreshadowing? Like, why is there getting a, a dense, brilliant novel four or five times and then shit? <laughs> yeah. There's layers to this. It's revelatory. <laughs> Spooky Ghost brings up a good point. They missed the opportunity to do Jack Frost H2O 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, things come back. You don't expect it, but... Yeah. I mean, if they said, like, we're going to revisit this, I'd be, I'd be like, honor-bound to be there day one to find out what that looked like. Totally. <laughs> but Michael Keaton should come on as, like, an EP on that. So that mm -hmm. Oh, that would be brilliant. Yeah collide the worlds but if they if they rob if you got the call they're like you know what jack frost three we're bringing everybody back totally yeah <laughs> and that would i'd cross the border for COVID on that one <laughs> like oh totally like, yeah. you could say you could do a, a a safe production if everybody was wearing that that snowman costume yeah yeah you could <laughs> no i'd i'd even like if, even if i had to have two weeks in in isolation on the way back i'd do it for COVID or for uh, jack frost <laughs> <laughs> totally oh man that would be just so great yeah this is this is where we get into a real good traditional horror trope here the promiscuous teens yeah that's that's how dare you follows impulses you have yeah. to wait for marriage craven. this is a west craven <laughs> homage <laughs> <laughs> don't what's going on oh, man. Oh, big. <laughs> such a good hand wow <laughs> A little POV shot. That's so <laughs> realistic. I love the big doofy hands. Uh -huh. <laughs> there it is. World's most what pissed off snow cone. I love that line. Oh, my stuff snow cone. Oh. You know, he's a serial killer, but at least he's having fun with it. Yeah, he, he's got some good quips. <laughs> it's a long shot. Oh, no. And that's a good power, too, the icicle shot. But why is he yeah. pulled out? Like, he shot it into his head. Why is it yanked out? I don't know. He was no, it with that. He was good, but... Maybe he needs to return it to his body. You know, it's part of him. Yeah. Like yank it out and put it back in. I think that's probably it. <laughs> and now the music man, it gets like it's rocking. Yeah, <laughs> he's just ripping in the back. <laughs> it's true. He just gets to shred. She said she wanted a roaring fire, though. So. I mean, you, you think she would be upset that she didn't get the roaring fire, but instead of bathtub. Oh, at, least gets, totally. at least she gets this uh, rock and I like to imagine this is playing in the house Sick too. Rip. Yeah. <laughs> like in the next room, just we, somebody else is there just shredding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would have been very confusing to me as a five-year-old for sure. A lot yeah. of a lot of conflicting feelings coming out of this scene. Daddy, why am I watching this? <laughs> and this was, and, then, and here it's coming up here. Yeah, this is the part that I I swear that I oh the carrot in the bud. Oh, America's sweetheart, Shannon Elizabeth. <laughs> Paying her dues right out of the gate. <laughs> God, that must have been just miserable shooting that. I can't imagine, yeah. No, horrible. Just like, oh, is he banging her head against the wall? 
Yeah, I don't <laughs> this is an insane. Oh, God, that's just the worst. That's so funny. <laughs> just insane. And who's yeah, that yeah. waving? Who is that waving? I, I don't know. Just some, just some fellow. Some, yeah, that guy is like a guy. You know, it was very silly of me to even ask you, Connor. Like, was this before American Pie? Because if it was, I don't think she would have signed up for this after American Pie. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that was the shot. the 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 shot in the shower. I swear, it was on the back of the VHS, and that was very upsetting to me too as a child. Where <laughs> he's grabbing her, and he's smoking. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica, my favorite ghoul in the chat. Thank you for, for joining. Having a great time watching Jack Frost. And again, for anybody just joining us, there's the watch party link in the chat. If you click that, you'll be synced up perfectly with us. You'll, you'll be, you won't miss a single part of Jack Frost. We're seeing Rob here again, finally. Oh. Wow. Feels like yesterday, I'm sure. It is, this is such a thing in, in shows and films, uh, like the idea of, you know, the, the FBI comes in and kind of takes over the case from the local. Like, I wonder if that's in reality, is that ever an actual clash where the local like police are like, oh, man, the feds are coming in, stomping on my case. Yeah, totally. And they got authority. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Stephen is really good in this. I don't know where he is. I, I uh, hope he's all right. I haven't heard from him here. I would have loved to have gotten some of his thoughts on, on making this because he is, he is really good in it. Locked and loaded. Look at this gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whose car is it that they're talking about? Um, the other kid. Um, oh, wait, it's the one that Jack Frost stole. Oh, okay. Oh, it's other. Okay. He, he was cruising around it, which I love that he yeah, yeah. drove a car. <laughs> 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 bitch couldn't make it. <laughs> You're so proud of your creation there. I get it, yeah. It couldn't help but be like, well, it worked. Oh, man, this it is worked. ridiculous. Ooh. Oh, this whole sequence is just <laughs> fucking hand dry dryers to like, yeah. It's like yeah, it's just the most absurd thing in the world. It's all set up though. I think there was a thing earlier with her drying her hair. Also, yeah, you're right. It's those leap motifs. Everything's plotted. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you people? <laughs> <laughs> He's just intrigued by the yeah, oh god. That's great. Just imagine you can just see somebody spraying the hose on the other side. You can see it moving back and forth. <laughs> you can see the feet going back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see my god. I will find a way. This is good. He's shooting some <laughs> Shooting water. <laughs> you blow up the water. Oh, oh my. Breaking news. 
Uh, Rob, according to your IMDb, you already were in a Hallmark Christmas movie, Hitched for the Holidays, with Joey Lawrence. Yeah, I, I, I didn't remember that that was Hallmark. Yes, I was. That was that was a few wow. years. That was that was also kind of cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Not as cheesy as this one, but it was also pretty cheesy. That's, <laughs> that's I, forgot, I forgot that that was Hallmark. Yes, I was in that Hallmark. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. We don't have to campaign for anything. You already achieved yeah. it. Yeah. We can get yeah. you in another one, maybe. We can start a hashtag. It, it, hashtag, yeah. <laughs> I think we've kind of figured it out all throughout the night. Like, you could do a fusion... Hallmark, it's set up as a Hallmark movie. Surprise, it's Jack Frost 3. I, I think that would be great. I think that would... Jack, but it, it it's like Jack Frost 2021, where it ignores the second one. It's a true sequel. <laughs> yeah, it retcons, you know, the less popular film. And they just call it Jack Frost. They don't call yeah. it Jack Frost 3. Yeah, that could be like the deceptive gimmick of it, of like... Oh, the Hunkin, his name is Jack. You know, like, Hallmark's Jack Frost. <laughs> nope, turned. What did you say? What's the name of this town, Connor? Did you said it before? Snowcomish. <laughs> Snowmington? Snowmington. Oh. That's it. You, yeah. You can set it up in Snowmington, kind of a, a rom com. And then true fans will immediately pick up on it. Well, no, this is secretly a Jack Frost flick. <laughs> here it is. They all, you got all the hairspray and bug spray. Mm -hmm. This is a hell of a plan. Just fill it up with aerosol products to <laughs> kill Jack Frost. You know, you're working with the jab. Is that bug spray? What is that? It, yeah, it appears to be every sort of aerosol product they can yeah. find. Some bug spray, some hairspray, some Febreze, perhaps. It's going to mess you up. <laughs> it's, it's all... Exposed. Over the nose, buddy. Over the nose. <laughs> this is see, this has got like a COVID kind of pre... Yeah. <laughs> but he's got... Yeah, but he doesn't have it over his nose, so it's not going to be effective. It's gonna no. Be, what are you doing? He's afraid of it freezing up over his. <laughs> Come on, Sam. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, no. Eat, eat, eat the water, right? It's so. It's you so get up and run, bud. It's really like suspenseful. I'm. I'm. I'm I, don't know what <laughs> I love the inner monologue. Pick him up. Pick him <laughs> up. <laughs> oh, there's that Barney arm again. <laughs> But it, okay, but that, that was one was good. good. That was real snow. That looks good. He kicked the arm and it fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They locked this guy up. I don't remember why he was locked up. Did he punch him or something? What I think, yeah, I think he got a little belligerent there. Like, all yeah, right. You, yeah, he was uh, pretty delirious from right. his running with Jack Frost. Oh, right, right. <laughs> right. <That's> right. <laughs> Not putting you out the window. <laughs> And Steven does this crazy. Oh. Job. <laughs> He's just out. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Watch out. Oh, Ghost in the chat again brought up. Rob, you worked on Superstar, the Karen Carpenter story. Yeah. That. that was great. No, Todd, Todd and I, we went to college together. So I um we did a bunch of projects together. I directed him in a Jean Genet play, uh, The Maids, in uh, my sophomore year in college. Oh man, this is this is this is heavy. <laughs> uh, it's all coming. It's like a it's like a flashback. It's 
And this is good. I like that. It's like the mm -hmm. they shot the snow melting and hit it in reverse. Mm -hmm. Kind of like those little creative tricks. There's that Barney arm. And this is yeah. This is where you get into the real like Voorhees of it, where like you think he's down. No. Oh, he's creative. He's he. Hey, mom of Picasso. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's pretty good. That is a good line. <laughs> the the lines for yeah for the for Jack Frost are very funny. Definitely has kind of a Freddy thing, right? Where he's yeah. making his puns and he's got a personality. Yeah. Well, I rewatched um all the nightmares recently. And in the first one, he doesn't really have a lot of quips. Mm -hmm. Right. And originally, um, Wes Craven didn't want him to be so iconic or funny. Mm, yeah. Oh. But he came back to do a new Nightmares because he wanted to make Freddy truly scary again. Mm -hmm. And that's the only reason he came back. I think it's that contrast, though, to like your other slashers, which are usually stark, silent, and mm -hmm. don't have to, you know, they're just foreboding death. I think having that contrast of a guy who has that person. I, and then, and then Wes Craven, obviously when he does scream, you know, I mean the, the all the different iterations of the ghost face killer, but you yeah, know, yeah. He, he talks and he yeah. makes these jokes and things. I, I think that's, that's to its, uh, its power. Mm -hmm. And Rob, if I remember correctly, you were you are you are killed by Frey Krueger on that film, aren't you? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what what I feel very proud about is that the scream in that is my scream live. <laughs> Do any looping? It wasn't any ADR. It was like the scream on set was the scream. Nice. I guess killed. So I just yeah. <laughs> but that's that I feel the best about. Yeah. <laughs> No, because the, the hand, it's the mechanical hand that we created mm -hmm. yeah. as the props people. And then it goes in and tears and rips my throat apart. So it's, mm -hmm. it's total, it's such a blast. And it's, it's um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, I'm spacing right now. The, who, the creature, creator, um, Stan. It was his son who was my props master uh, um, partner in that is the, mm. who, who, Fuck, I gotta, I, all right, I gotta try to get my head together. Um, so Cameron um, um, and Stan, what's his name? He's the creature, he's the top creature. Yeah, take a look at it, top creature maker. They formed the, the company that does all the special effects for James Cameron's uh, company. It's Stan Winston. Stan Winston. Yeah. So it was Stan Winston's son, who is the prop master, who we were partners in the prop master, and Stan Winston, formed with with um you know with uh um what's his name from avatar and they're the ones who formed that the the big uh you know um effects house they all work together on that so anyways it, it was great that you know his son got to play a special effects yeah uh guy and stuff like that and that was based also because you know in real life uh, um, you know, the woman who, uh, what's her name? She was married to a, a special effects guy that had been a special effects guy in that. And she had really been stalked in real life. So it was all based on real stuff that had happened in real life. And they were playing it for real, which is kind of, yeah. cool, you know, it was really good anyways. And I imagine kind of a badge of honor to be killed by one of those iconic figures. <laughs> oh, completely. Oh, my God. <laughs> all that stuff is great. Any of those. Yeah. You know, like doing that and doing, you know, and being in in, in Star Trek. So like I was in a bunch, you know, three episodes yeah. of Star Trek and being in in in, in uh, um, X Files. Like being in in those iconographic kind of shows is a total blast. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. uh, they they hit him back with it. The lines seven ten split. Look at you guys. The rogues <laughs> gallery. <laughs> Play this like they're saying you got to line up like this. I mean, come on, it's just like <laughs> it's, it's it's air dryers. You're coming in and they're dollying out. It's so funny. It works though. Right. Side of crust. 
That's a fucking priest coming in there. It's like what little <laughs> exorcist stuff. It works. I I I thought this would have for sure been the final straw. You know, it's been the last dance. Whole town oh, comes together. That's where it becomes very surprising. It's it's <laughs> they get him in the furnace. We iced him. That's like an Arnold line. Yeah. Sorry to put you on ice. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're over. And that kind of looks like a, a creature. <laughs> Ghost asks, doesn't Jack Frost feel like a solo super villain movie? I mean, I said on Silent Night, Deadly Night, that was like Santa Joker. This is kind of Snowman Joker, you know? Yeah. The, the character study. <laughs> there you go. And Rob, you're kind of like a Dr. Frankenstein figure in this. You had to kill your creation. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough when you do that, it's, you know, you put so much into your work and. <laughs> Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh. There's those teeth. That looks good. Yeah. Oh, oh. Steven. <laughs> and this is it for you, Rob. Hate to see it. <laughs> Cole. <laughs> That's all she wrote for you. But this is a little practical effect here. Here, play with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you get one last. This is a great scene. <laughs> I can't imagine what kind of direction you get for this. <laughs> uh, there was no, no direction. This <laughs> is right temperature? Yeah, this is good. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, that, that had to have been an absolute blast to. Oh, it was, yeah. And that's Don't just a tube. Was, oh, that's a great a piece of advice. taped to the side of my cheek. Yeah. It was completely, you know, practical, just a tube and just, like, vomit out this water. I don't know, that, that whole thing in my throat was a little... That was great. Yeah. The, for, the, for the scene prior to that, where you, where you truly, where you truly bite it, what... Was was the was somebody there and the, like were you having to actually play off of a snowman there in the room or, or was it not really? Yeah, that thing was there. Yeah, but you just saw it and it's you know and it looks exactly the way it looks. So I, you know, I imagine it's a, a challenge emoting off of that. Completely, you just have to just you know you just you just make it up. But obviously, it looked like I just made it up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, this reveal. The oatmeal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
hard for this. Good lord, imagine if he ate that oatmeal, he'd be dead. Yeah. The whole movie doesn't happen. And this looks this is strange here. Now he's got like this bloody meat coming out of his snow body. But that I love the, the close-ups on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good that's snowman flying through the sky. It looks good. I love the push-ins on like the weird like pulsating snowman meat. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't I don't get it. He had snowman meat. I don't yeah, he was he was like de molecularizing before and turning into water, but now he's got blood and some sort of internal anatomy. Because he's coming back, maybe I don't know, maybe he's devolving our <laughs> oh, this joke. I don't know. No balls. And now we're rocking again. <laughs> Just got to stuff the door up with Christmas cards. That's just ridiculous. But again, every every detail set up with the oatmeal, you know, every nothing is in here by accident. I don't get what, what's the science with the oatmeal? Did he with some special oatmeal? The kid didn't want his dad to get cold, so he put antifreeze in the oatmeal. Oh, oh, that's fucked up. So if the dad actually ate it, he would have like died. Yeah, this whole movie doesn't happen. So it's a stupid kid who today. <laughs> really stupid. He like really stupid and just extremely stupid. Like, <laughs> What is wrong with you, kid? Put antifreeze so you don't. <laughs> I know he's young, but come on now. You like go in the garage and get that. I also love that antifreeze is apparently his worst because it's called antifreeze. So logically, that's what you would use to defeat him. Not not raging fires. That wouldn't make sense. No, it's got to be. Antifreeze. Right. <laughs> And antifreeze you put in your car because <laughs> it's called antifreeze. That's his kryptonite. <laughs> Maybe it has something to do with the chemical composure of. Okay, that's a good point. By nature, yeah, is it born by chemicals? Oh, see, look at that. That looks so gross. Ooh. He's got those weird, like, bubbling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody's like pumping that. It looks, it looks good. Oh, that's, this is your dark night of the soul here. You think the chips are down. It's over. It's a gusher. It's like he's just a stand-up comedian just rifling him <laughs> off as fast as he can. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I got to get all my material out before my audience is dead. <laughs> I got him. Is that his son? That's the like shop owner. There goes the Barney arm. And this, this is, you know, he's in a pool of antifreeze. Not, not, can't be very good for your skin. Yeah, probably not. Don't want to get that in your mouth. Don't want to get that in your eyes. <laughs> yes, as well. Any orifice, really. He's in, he's in it with him. It's just like, He's sacrificing everything to, to kill this monster. <laughs> and he punches it. I love it. It 
it's so realistic, which is why it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> the bloody snow. Bloody snow, yeah. This is, good. this is like this is like Ahab and Moby Dick right here, you know? Or like uh Van Helsing and Dracula. This is a mighty confrontation. Oh, he picked up the Barney arm. This kid's so stupid. Oh! Oh, my God. It's got him in the winter scarf chokehold. It's going to baptize him in the antifreeze. That's an antifreeze. Totally. That's what you got to do. Doesn't taste very good, does it, kiddo? <laughs> what you gave me for breakfast, you little psycho? <laughs> Taste your own medicine. <laughs> and then the priest there. Good job. Good job. <laughs> oh, this part, this, this part, I, this part's kind of, oh, oh, so they're pouring like the remnant. Okay, I see. They're pouring the remnants of the Jack Frost antifreeze mixture into the back in. <laughs> of ceremonial passing of <laughs> yeah everyone has to look and, and think about this this is all of their burden to bear for the rest of their lives <laughs> until presumably they go on vacation or something and then in the sequel <laughs> <laughs> this town's dark secret this will that would be it like next up should be like a a small like mini series of what the fallout is in their town like well, they've got to bury them all. Oh, of course, because that's all pieces of him. Uh oh. Oh, and here you go. You get like your kind of Marvel stinger at the end. It's not over. No. Not being stupid. Come on, guys. <laughs> and there it is. He's not dead. <laughs> now you know what, though. I, I am very tempted to uh, watch the sequel and. And see how they put him down for good. Not saying that we need to do that tonight, but I'm very <laughs> No, we don't. <laughs> Not at all. You didn't sign up for that one, Rob. I didn't sign up for that one. I I know I ended up being I the roast just came out now, so I got to see the whole thing, which I'm really happy yeah. about. Yeah. Perfect. I'm so glad you were able to join us for this at all, let alone all of it. Yeah. No, how... it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. It was it was great to see it again. I yeah. Mean, I mean I'd have to see it for another twenty five years, but it was yeah. Again now. This is the beginning of the resurgence, though. This is the new movement to bring him back. It could be. You never know. That could be. This could be like you guys could have just kicked it up right now, and it might just take off. That's like, when like the 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 sort of editorial artic articles will come out, like saying it twenty years later. You know, Jack Frost is worth the revisit. Some things you didn't consider back in '97. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there might be some real um, think pieces written now. Yeah, the Atlantic has a couple of big things coming out, I think. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it's true, you know, and if anybody's coming in at the tail end of this, I mean, this, this the recording of this will go up on our YouTube channel, of course. So if you want to sync it up, you know, you, you can go back and watch it again if you, if you missed it the first time. But if you're in the mood for holiday, winter, Christmas horror this time of month as we are, I, I think this is a – a, a great one to pick. Yeah. It's fun. It's, it's very silly, yeah, but it's it, it, it's a fun watch, you know. And it's it, it it's a it, I think it's self aware, you know. It's not like it, it is very ridiculous, but yeah. it knows what it is, and yeah. it, it's great. It, it, and again, Rob, it was thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, for thanks you guys. I appreciate it. It's really great to to hang with you all and uh, say good night to everybody. Uh, I'm gonna take off, but uh, appreciate it. It was really a lot of fun. Thank what you. a treat. Thank you, Rob. Enjoy that roast. Okay, thanks so much. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what a legend. How oh, amazing. He joined us for the whole thing. I loved that. <laughs> oh. It was great. How do you how do you feel having been able to revisit this film as a as an adult? I love it. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It is so much fun. Like it, it's one of those so bad it's good. Like it's it is, yeah. Fun. It's, it's not very, terrible. It's it's just a fun ride. Yeah, from from start to I, I would now I am I I will be tempted to watch the sequel because I've seen the sequel. Like I remember that it's 
they're on vacation and they he has snow snowball babies and like there's something with the babies. Now I gotta, I gotta watch the sequel too. Yeah, I feel like I, I got. I wonder if that's on Tubi or something. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I gotta revisit that too and, and check it out. But um, there it is, Jack Frost watch along. Uh, what a fantastic time! I had a blast. Thank you to everybody at home who who uh, tuned in live again. Thank you to Rob for joining us. So so cool that he took the time out. Not not even just for a little bit for the entire film. So great to really funny to get like somebody who was there and get their their insight and their sort of retrospective on this insane crazy i what a what a what a cycle for like what a trajectory for us to go from uh being terrified of the vhs box and blockbuster and then 20 plus years later get to sit down and watch with one of the stars of the film who would who would know i never not once did i walk down the aisle at the video store and and looked at that vhs cover and and thought to myself, one day I'm going to do a podcast watch, watch <laughs> with this, one of the stars of this movie. It's that it's that butterfly effect thing, right? Where it's like, you just never know the tiniest decisions in, in, in life events. You never know, you know, where they're oh, going. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, well, let's let's bring him in here. But um, oh, my gosh. Hi, Stephen. Hi there. I am terribly sorry. Um, I got. I have no real excuse other than I just got caught up in doing stuff here around the house. And, and suddenly I looked at my uh, clock and my schedule and I apologize. I'm going to put my headset in my, uh, just a second, in my Bluetooth device. Yeah. Is, there we go. Hi, Sorry. No, that's okay. Well, well, first of all, welcome, Stephen. Thank you for joining us. Oh, uh, uh, listen, I, uh, I'm very glad to be here, but I, I have a thing. I'm not getting, uh, not getting connected. Just don't go away. I'm uh, trying to figure out why I'm not uh, hearing you through my headset. Okay. Uh, hang on. Camera, audio, um, uh, Bluetooth. We finished. Oh, there we go. Can you hear okay. us all right? There we go. Oh, yeah. Uh oh, did we lose him? Now he's I don't know if you can still hear us, David. You fru you froze up on our side. Which is which is sometimes the here, maybe sometimes you drop him out and bring him back in. Let's see. Oh no. Nope. We really lost him. It's even worse now. He's, he's in the void. Oh dear. I don't know if you can hear us, Steven. Sometimes this happens, especially with mobile. You might need to exit out and then come back into the virtual studio. I don't know if you can hear us or not. Um, but sometimes that helps. There he goes. So maybe he, maybe he'll pop back in. Um, oh my gosh! <laughs> there, here he is. Okay, let's see. All right. All right. So, Hira? how you doing? I can. I uh, yes, I can. All right. Perfect. Well, we're we're all right, Stephen. Um, it, it's great to see you. It's great to have you. Um, I, I I do I do regret to inform you. We quite literally just finished the movie. Oh shit! I. I, I <laughs> Well, I'm here. If anybody, if there's anybody who wants to to talk or ask questions or anything else, I do apologize. Uh, I, I I'm I'm just so uh, you know these last nine months, I really haven't had any things that you know schedules to keep or things to do, and, and I was so accustomed to checking my you know my uh, uh, my agenda, my calendar, and I, I really just got out of the habit uh, yeah. of, of doing sure. that. So my Abject apologies. Uh, I, 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 I feel badly though, and I, I apologize. And no, no, I, I, I totally hear you. I think we are all having that year to some fashion or another. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I do yeah. have. Well, let, let me ask you, and you can you can answer this completely honestly. How how much how much time do we have with you, Steve? Uh, whatever you want. I'm here. Uh, I, I'm here. I was just uh, I was uh, gonna make some dinner, and I put um, I put some stuff in the uh, in the nuker, and uh, and I'm fine. I mean, I can always shovel a little something into my mouth, into my face while we're talking, right? Like, but yep, maybe not a minute. You would far you'd be far from the first to be eating while <laughs> doing this show. <laughs> so um, did uh, did Rob uh, did Rob come by? I'm sorry, I missed him. If he did. Yeah, he did. He 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 stuck. He actually stuck around and watched the whole thing. It was quite hilarious to have him for. Oh <laughs> uh, well, he was very very funny. It was 
it was quite something. Uh, uh, you know, I still I, I vividly remember working with him, and I don't think I have seen him since then. So that's oh god, I, I think that's twenty five years. Um, <laughs> yes, it's twenty five years. Hmm. So anyway, so who's who who are who's here with us? Who's left with us? So this is, I mean, th th what you see on the screen, this is it's a, um, this is Taylor. I've been emailing with you. Um, this is my yeah, Connor. Um, and 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 th and this is it. We were actually winding down on the show, but I'm so happy that you've you've joined us. Um, yeah. we, we just watched the film. We and I'll, truthfully, we were just remarking it, Rob as as well, again and again, how good you are in it. Oh, um, good lord. For for being such a well, well, that's the thing for being such a crazy, ridiculous film. Yeah, uh, the the you come you come at it with such an, an earnestness mm -hmm. and like and like you take well, you're taking it seriously, which makes it so much better. Well, that's the thing with whether it's uh, uh, anything that's not. I'm I'm looking for a word here. Okay, let's say anything that's not realistic. The cl the more real you play it the better it usually is, you know, so you don't can't, you don't play comedy for laughs and you don't play horror or, or, uh, or this kind of comedy horror combination for either the laughs or the comedy. You play it as though this is the real, this is what's going on is absolutely real. And then, then the horror and the comedy come out, find themselves. Yeah. So yeah, you're absolutely right. I was, that was what we kept kind of touching on with, you know, taking it seriously or, or, or not taking it. Like that's the difference between being in on the, being in on the joke or being the joke. And you were totally in on the joke. <laughs> I did have a wonderful time. Now the director, by the way, uh, it's too bad you couldn't get a hold of him. I'm not in touch with him. I don't know where he is, um, but um, he's actually a brilliant guy. Yeah, uh, the the writer director of, of this uh, of uh, of Jack Frost. Now you know they went on and made a sequel, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, which I imagine you didn't have the opportunity to return. We just saw your demise. Well, no, uh, <laughs> I was going to be in it. Really? Yes, I was going to be in it, and um, we're going back to 1999. Okay, so I got a call. Uh, uh, um, well, let me let me back up a little bit. I had decided at that point that I was going to go back to school, and um, I got a master's degree. And I was in my first semester of going of having gone back to school after you know uh, you know two decades of of not being in in school. And they said we're going to shoot in December, and I said that's perfect. I'll be on you know winter break then. I have the whole month of December and the first week or so of January. Um, let's do it. Well, they kept pushing the date and pushing the date and pushing the date. They didn't get to start, even start it till it was February. And I said, I can't do it. I can't take off now in the beginning of my second semester, um, to be in the film. Uh, so I, you know, I'm sorry, I have to pass on it. So that was too bad. You know, I, do you remember, or, or did you ever know at all how they were, positioning that character to return i'm very curious oh yes oh yes 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 because actually you never saw me die you yeah. saw me yeah. get uh my face chewed off by <coughs> by the icicle teeth of the snowman and so <laughs> what we were going to do was put an eye patch on me and have big scars oh that would be brilliant that would have been great and and then we started talking about how when we do the third one, maybe I'll lose an arm or a leg <laughs> and, and come back and we can do this until I have no more limbs left. Well, you know, <laughs> anyway, it would have been, um, would have been funny. I wonder, cause they never got to do the third one. We were, we were of course talking with Rob and, and would he come back for the third one? I, I, I think we need to speak this into existence almost. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I'd love to come back. I, I you know, I, I would have done it. I would have done it. I, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but I did a movie, I don't know, five, six years ago called um, The Angry Video Game Nerd, the movie. That's right. Yeah. And um, in that one, I lose both arms. <laughs> so, 
that's that was kind of fun. I mean, I I've been killed in my career in a lot of very interesting ways. Uh, it's always fun, always fun. Yeah, you know, you you do have a very a very fascinating and diverse body of work. I would. What I'm very interested in is is you're also quite a uh, a popular voice actor. Well, um, popular. Uh, let me let me let me let me cogitate on that for a moment. Um, I, I, when I started uh, acting, it's a you know I mean we're it's a long time now. It's forty six years that I've been an actor. Uh, I started in Canada, in Montreal, where I was born and raised. And in Montreal, actors um, who earned a living did everything that an actor can do. So. And that was what I saw when I when I entered the field. I saw everybody doing all these things. So you didn't just do movies or television. You did movies when they came around. You did television when it came around, and commercials, and stage, and industrial shows, and industrial presentations, and voiceover. So when I got to California, to Los Angeles and Hollywood, in 1981, I didn't know that the industry in the US was very hierarchical. There's like, for example, people said, I do movies, I don't, I don't do TV. And then there were people who said, I do guest star roles, I don't do co-stars, and, and all the way down. And, 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 and there were you know, people, who, everybody, and the, and the movie people and the TV people said, well, I don't do commercials, oh my God, you know? <laughs> um, so I didn't know that you weren't supposed to. So I did everything. And I came into uh, here into, into Southern California and the voiceover world existed and it was populated by a bunch of people who, who were very happy to be unknown, not making, you know, big money per job, but working constantly and, and doing quite well. Um, so I just did, uh, you know, everything that there was to do, which has uh, enabled me to have a, a decent, a very nice living for these last 46 years and, uh, you know, thrive actually, you know, yeah. when others, uh, you know, were waiting tables and whatnot, I was off to do a voiceover or a commercial or, or whatever. So, you know, I never, I never had to do another job. Yeah. You, you've done a lot of work in anime. I, I, I've seen specifically. I mean, Recently, I more anime. Yeah, um, I got hooked up through a, another voice guy um, with a com with a couple of companies. Uh, one in particular, a company called Bang Zoom, and they do a lot of the dubbing of anime. And they call me. You know, I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, um, uh, in the beginning, I did a few different things, and then uh, they asked me to audition for a an older character. So now, anytime a character has uh, is old or bald or gray, they call me. <laughs> yep. But you can you can be anything in the in the realm of anime. You can. I know you've been yeah. in several iterations of like Gundam, so you can be like a a giant mech pilot. Like, were you familiar yes. with any of these things prior to being part of them? Like, had you known any anime prior to being part of that world? Nope. No, that's, that's amazing. No. Cause you're, cause what you, when I, when I was looking through, you know, you, those are, you know, like Hunter X Hunter and Gundam and Berserk. Like those are, those are big, like in, in the world of anime, those are like marquee names, you know, that's, okay. that's no small fish. Uh, I have to tell you, I don't <laughs> watch myself. I don't listen to myself. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, I, I, I didn't. I knew nothing about anime. I, it, it, the world of voiceover is really kind of strange. You got to understand. Um, first of all, you don't see people. You go into a studio. On, on rare occasions, you might be working with one or two, or sometimes, very rarely, there'll be a group. But most of the time, you're there. You're in a microphone, and you get to see on a TV screen in front of you, the character you're doing. But that's all you see, mm -hmm. the scenes you're doing and the character you're doing. So sometimes I don't even know what the heck the character is doing until I get there and I go, uh, uh, okay. Um, and sometimes the director has to, I say to the director, tell me how I ended up here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So uh, just so I know how to 
how to how to handle this, um, you know, or or, or or how to feel about it or, or whatever, because, you know, it's it's voice acting. It's right. voice acting. It's not just, you know, speaking. Um, you got to 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 do it well. You've got to uh, have an emotion. Was that a challenge making the jump from, you know, in front of camera, having your full body, uh, body and face emoting to having to figure out how to how to express that purely through your voice? No, uh, I did not ever find it to be difficult or challenging. I, you know, wait a minute. Let me let me rephrase that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I learned I learned on the job kind of uh, kind of thing. Um, I, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, when I came to L.A., and now most of most of my uh, voice work had been uh, up until the, the first five years of my career, I did a lot of commercials. Um, I did uh, a lot of uh, uh, dubbing of foreign films into into English. Um, I did a lot of um, kind of industrial narration. So I had two jobs right off the bat when I came into L.A. One of them... Uh, this is, uh, uh, there was a, um, the hell was the name of the guy? Wait a second. It was called Fire and Ice. And the guy who, who wrote it and directed it had done, I think, his main claim to fame, Ralph Bakshi. And, and don't ask me, I don't know how I remembered his name, but I did. His main claim to fame was that he had um, uh, done this kind of animated Felix the Cat, and it was, almost pornographic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, now I didn't see it. So I get a call from my agent who says, um, I uh, come pick up this material. There's this guy wants to meet you. Um, uh, his name is Ralph Bakshi. The project is Fire and Ice. And she said, let me read you the description. The, the, it's, the, it's Prince Necron. And the voice is that of Roddy McDowell doing Hamlet on a bad day. So now you also have to understand that I didn't, this is, this is pre, basically pre-internet. We yeah. didn't have, this is 19, early 1980s. I'm thinking 1981, 1982. So I have to like figure this out. I make some calls, what kind of voice. And so I go in to meet this guy. Now, where are you guys located? Do you know LA at all? Not not intimately. We're so we're in a, we're based in Ohio. You know, I, I've been out okay. to Ohio before, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't know specific. Okay. So, Los Angeles is big and sprawling. There's no question, and I was fairly new to Los Angeles. So, you have Los Angeles proper, and then you have the Valley. You've heard of you've heard of the Valley, which yeah. um, is enormous and. Uh, in the summertime, hotter than hell and um, dry and uh, crazy. So I was living over in Los Angeles proper in, a, in an area n near Hollywood. Um, and I get the address to this guy's place and I get onto this Laurel Canyon Boulevard, um, which the, what, the, what Laurel Canyon was this place where uh, it, it really was a canyon. You went up and over some hills the Hollywood Hills to get from LA to the Valley and Laurel Canyon was famous because it's where all the, there was all kinds of music people. Joni Mitchell lived there and, and uh, all kinds of people in, in the sixties. So I'm driving through there and I've never, I don't know LA very well. And I get back and I'm now on the flats of the Valley and I'm driving and I'm driving and I'm driving and I'm, I'm the, I, I'm getting closer to the address, but I mean, the address is, is like, uh, 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 17,000 something or other, and I'm at 500. Okay, so I'm driving, and I'm driving, and I'm driving. And I finally get to this little uh, uh, short two-story office building, and uh, and it's it, I go in, and, and I knock on the door, and it's dark in, in this office. And it's kind of like there's a, there's a desk over on one side, there's a couple of desks and bookcases, and there's a couch all the way on the other side of the thing. And I'm going, oh no, what the hell? And there's this enormously fat man and he's kind of half sitting, half reclining on the couch. And this is Ralph Bakshi. And he says, um, who are you? What are you doing here? And I'm going, um, I tell him who I am and what I'm here. Oh yeah, 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 come on in, come on in, sit down over there. 
and he's from New York. You can tell he's from New York. And he and he says, "Okay, let's uh, let's hear it." So I do my best, uh, you know, uh, uh, version of this of this guy. And he says, "Great, thanks a lot." And then I get a call a couple of days later. He loved you. We're gonna you're gonna go to the studio and work. Okay, great. So that was number one story. Number two story is I get a call um, to do what's called voice replacement. The producers were not happy with the voice of, of a got person they'd hired. Now, it was some kind of movie of the week in which the, the, the bad, it was a, 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 a cop by day who was killing people at night while dressed in drag. Perfect. Okay. Mm. So <laughs> they hired a real female impersonator. So the female impersonator looked good, but the female impersonator's voice was a little too male when he was dressed as a woman and a little too fey when dressed in the cop uniform. So they hired a woman to do his voice at night for the night shots, uh, all the shots where he's dressed as a woman, and they hired me to do his voice when he said cop. Oh. And I get into it, and Stacy Keach is the 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 main is the hero of this movie. And one of the scenes that I have to revoice with Stacy Keach is a scene in which there's a big fight going on between Stacy Keach, a fist fight between I Stacy Keach's character and this female impersonator who's dressed in his male clothes. And I watched Stacy Keach and he was really standing in front of the microphone. We're about, you know, two feet, three feet, four feet apart. And he's really throwing the punches and he's, oh, and he's taking the punches and he's physicalizing everything. And I went, oh, okay. I mean, this is a guy I know. So, and that's one of the ways I learned it. I imitated people. Yeah. So, those are my two, uh, two, two of my intro to LA voiceover world stories. What a, what a fascinating and I imagine non-typical way to get into what obviously has been a, a very long career path. Oh yeah, long. <laughs> there, and there's there's one I got it because I got all excited when I realized, uh, you know, I mean, we were talking about Jack Frost, and I was five years old when this thing came out. You were also Splinter, Ninja Turtles. Oh, I was the voice of Splinter. Um, That's wild. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, it it really was. It was actually a lot of fun. I, I had a wonderful time doing that. And um, I actually, um, when I when I went back to school, as I mentioned before, some twenty years ago, uh, as a as a uh, in a in a master's program, I was actually hired to teach. So I was teaching. At the university, I was teaching acting and I was teaching auditioning techniques and stuff like that. And when some people found out that I had done Splinter before that, they were bugging me and bugging me and bugging me to do the voice. And so, um, and I kept saying, come on, come on, come on. Let, 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 not, no. So finally, one of the guys bugged me so much that I turned around and I said some, some really obscene stuff in Splinter's voice. <laughs> so he... Covered his head, ears with his hands and went, "Oh my God, I'm scarred for the rest of my life." <laughs> that was that was kind of fun, but uh, yeah, it was it was great fun. <laughs> we had, and this is good because uh, in the chat here, um, El Spooky goes, "You know, we had Rob on who'd been in X Files, who so actually asked his exact same question to Rob: Was Jillian Anderson nice to you?" <laughs> okay, um, I. Jillian Anderson was walking along smoking a cigarette. And just jokingly, I said to her, you know those things are really terrible for you. And she stopped and turned and looked at me and says, you don't know me well enough to talk to me like that. And I, <laughs> oh my and I, looked, I looked at her and I said, all right, you're right, I don't know you. <laughs> and have a nice life. And I walked away because I thought, Come on. <laughs> Everybody knows they're bad for you. And I said it in a joking fashion. Yeah. But she, so I don't know. She, maybe she's a nice person. I don't know. What did Rob say? He had, he had nothing but glowing things to say. Yeah. <laughs> that was my only encounter with her. And I thought, come on, lady. Jeez. 
<laughs> Duchovny was nice. I chatted with him a bit. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it's funny. I have not seen Rob. I don't think I've seen Rob since then. Isn't that amazing? I've seen his work. He's a, he's a, he, and he was terrific, by the way, in the, in the movie. I, I remember him very vividly, quite yeah. vividly. Oh, man, we were this close to the reunion here. We were so close. I and I really do apologize. I, you know, <laughs> no, it's just, right. it, it really was like like he he was out and then you were in. It was like a revolving door. It was, oh man, we were so close. Too bad. <laughs> Listen, do me a favor. Did you did you end up um, interchanging emails with him, or did you go through his rep? Um, no, I didn't email him directly. But yeah, I I I could pass your information along to him if you'd like. Please do, please do. Just just pass him my email address and what anything else and say. Yeah, that I'd love to say hi to him or whatever, you know. Yeah, I'm still I mean, in California. I think he's up. Is he still up in Vancouver or in yes, Canada? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, it was. I mean, it's great because in the film, the two of you, basically, all of your scenes are basically shared. You pretty much yeah, are all, in the same scene. All, a lot of them were. There were a few times when we were not in 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 scenes together, but but a lot of times we were. Uh, yeah. Did you hear about uh, Chris Allport and what happened to him? I don't. I don't believe so. It's really sad. Um, back in the mid, I want to say the mid two thousand, somewhere in there, Chris Allport was an incredible athlete. I mean, he was amazing. He uh, rock climbing. I, I skied with him, and I'm a. I've been a downhill skier since I was eight years old. Gee, uh, what's it called again? Just Telemark. You've ever heard of Telemark skiing? No, I'm not too familiar with the the skiing realm, though. Okay, so um, downhill skiing, the way we do it, mostly in this country, you you, you have a rigid boot. And your boot is kind of locked onto your ski at the toe and the heel. Okay. That's, I mean, all the ski racers and, and everything else. I'm having a little trouble because I, and my, the, the camera on my phone is in the right upper corner and I, and I keep moving it so that it's, you know, I'm off center and then I move it the wrong way. No, Sorry no, about it, that. It looks totally fine on this end for what that's worth. Okay. Well, that's good to hear. Um, so downhill skiing. You know, and you have cross-country skiing uh, in which the t only the toe is fastened into the ski, okay? So telemark skiing is essentially where you have the, the cross-country skis and the cross-country boots, and you're only in with your toe, and you're skiing down these steep slopes with the rest of us people who are locked into our skis, and it's, it's balletic. It's it's so graceful. You watch these people; they kind of oh, uh, I, I, I'm hard pressed to to describe it. But they'll slide the the the, the ski that's closer to the, the downhill side. They slide it forward, and the uphill ski goes kind of back, and they're on their toe. So uh, you know they they their heel is lifted completely off the ski. It's, I mean, it's this gorgeous dance. And he was so good at it. Um, anyway, he was off skiing one day in the mid two thousands and midweek, and he was caught in an avalanche and sadly died. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. I, knew, yeah. That he, I knew that he passed away, but I had, I didn't know the circumstances. of Those that. were the circumstances. I went to the funeral. Um, it was uh, and and a, and an after and the uh, the celebration of his life, and it was um, it was quite moving. He was very well regarded by a, by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I was in an acting class with him many 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 years ago. So wow, you know. Oh, so you'd known uh, him. You'd known him prior to the, to doing the the film with him then. Not well, but I knew him. Uh, I knew him. We had we had friends in common, and as I, and as I said, I was in an acting class with him. Yeah, yeah, and he is. We, you know, we touched on it earlier. He he's great in the movie. I mean, the the again the 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 way the angle that he comes at it on, which is you know obviously the character is this sort of we we we'd mentioned Twin Peaks earlier, kind of this small town sheriff. Mm -hmm. you know, he plays it so seriously and so so earnestly versus yeah, how yeah. And insane the, the plot is. He's, he's great. Oh, oh. You're kind of a little, 
we we said it like you're the, it was like you're the the team of heroes the three yeah. of you with Rob there it's yeah it was uh, it was fun it really was it was a good time did you did uh, Rob tell you about the, our our adventures where we were shooting up in the Big Bear California um I, we touched on a little bit but I but I I, I get I sense there's probably something well, there we didn't hear about well um uh, they we we were uh, scheduled to go in and shoot in Big Bear for. I guess we were there two and a half weeks. We we shot a lot in LA and we shot up in Big Bear because they wanted snow. Yeah. Well, 1995, no snow. <laughs> yeah. No, you can see no, that, yeah. no. We had to fake it. They faked it all. <laughs> all of it. Yeah. Every, there was no real snow. It was. It was. Uh, it was insane, uh, you know. They and they, they, we were up there. We're ready to shoot. No snow, and they had to make it all. It was I did not make it. They had to fake it, you yeah. know, with with whatever they could, whatever they used. I don't remember everything, but uh, they covered places with white stuff, and it looked it looked pretty good, you know. Yeah. No ice. No ice. <laughs> no snow. What a cruel, Amazing. cruel turn of fate for a film. It was indeed. A lot of it color was snow. Indeed. <laughs> Um, it, when we were talking to Rob about it, I, it had certainly been a very long time since he'd watched it. And it sounded like as if Jack Frost, you know, maybe not a, a, a part of his work that he is asked about much or talks about much. Do you have a similar experience where it's kind of this, this little secret on the filmography? Yeah, I, that's that I'd have to, I'd have to agree. I, I nobody, it's rarely, I, I, am I asked <laughs> about it? Um, you know, and, we all thought, I think we thought that it might end up being a, a, a more, more of a cult film. Yeah. Um, you know, a more popular cult film than it, than it is. I, I, I'm, I can't think of an example of, of, uh, of that kind of movie off the top of my head. But I mean, you know, it, it, it would have been wonderful if it had turned into something, but it didn't. And we all moved on, you know, just kept going. Careers. I don't know what happened with our, our director, who is also our writer, uh, whose name is escaping me right now. You, I'm sure you know what it is. I think it's uh, Michael, Michael Cooney, right? Michael Cooney. Uh, yeah. and, and by the way, he too was a great skier. <laughs> really? <laughs> they, they made snow, the artificial snow on the, on the hills. Up, there are two ski hills in Big Bear, and it got cold enough at night for them to make snow. So we were skiing during the day when we had, uh, had a little time. And wow. he was a, a wonderful athlete and brilliant, utterly brilliant. Yeah. Um, I will. I do have. I have one other story about this. Uh, about the. Um, uh, about about Jack Frost. Yeah. I got the script, and I thought, well, this sounds like fun, and I had. I did a television series in the 1980s. I was on a show called Night Heat. It was a cop show. And I had just started losing my hair. And all the way through Night Heat, they, they started, well, not all the way through, towards the last couple of years, it was thinning in the front and they were coloring it, coloring the skin so that it would just look the same as it had before. And so when I got back to Los Angeles in 1989, I got a hairpiece made, uh, uh, what you know, they call a toupee, which was just to fill in thinning areas, and I, and that's what I wore in that movie, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought to myself, I didn't know that I was going to wear it. I just thought, I'm going to wear it for this audition. Now I had a full beard, which was still red, and I had my hairpiece, which matched my own hair color, which was kind of a, a, a reddish brown. And I walked in and I did my audition and I was very happy to. And then I got the call. And one day while we're riding in a chairlift up at um, Big Bear Mountain, I turned to Michael Cooney and I said, I wanted to ask you. So look, I know you saw a lot of actors because they did. What made you decide that just for my curiosity, what made you choose me? And he looked and he said, when you walked in, I thought there, what was his name? Captain Commando or Captain Courage. Or, anyway, boys in England 
you know where 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 kids used to have a GI Joe here. Mm, yeah. Boys in England had this a military doll. I think he was a commando. He may have been Captain Commando or something like that. And he said, when I walked in, he thought that the doll had come to life because <laughs> the commando had the beard and the hair just like mine. And the, the commando had a, uh, I, somebody gave me one of the dolls I, and I have it somewhere. Um, <laughs> and when it had a, a leather jacket on and a pistol and all the rest of it. And so that's what he said to me. He said, I just thought you were perfect. You reminded me so much of Captain Commando or whatever the guy's <laughs> name was. And I thought, Okay, I'll take it. No, nah, I'm not arguing. So nothing. I'm Captain Commando or whatever it was, Captain something or other, or Commander or whatever it is. There, there are worse comparisons to draw, I'm sure. You know. Oh yeah. I mean, listen, it's fine. It really is. It was perfectly, perfectly fine. I I heard him and I went, good enough for me. I, whatever I it takes. I can believe it too because you cut such like an authoritative presence in the film, which is so funny contrasted with you know a big animated snowman going around killing people with holiday lights. Oh God! You if you had seen what they did that 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 snowman <laughs> with styrofoam balls stuck oh, oh, to one another. We were wondering about this because when you when you, you get a close up, it, it, I keep thinking it invokes like a Barney suit, you know, the way it kind of. Well, there were those. There were parts of it that were like that when they when they had the face moving, that was different. Mm -hmm. But you know, when they just had the snowman sitting there, it was two great big styrofoam balls. <laughs> what is it? I mean, we I, I asked Rob the same thing. What what was it like trying to act or like emote off of something? Like how like how could you? I can't even imagine, you know, because again, you play it so stark serious. I can't imagine, you know. And you know, a lot of times we didn't have anything there. You're mm -hmm. you're acting uh, 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 to a piece of uh, uh, two pieces of masking tape stuck to something that in a cross beside the camera, or you know, somebody's holding up a stick. Um, with with an X on it or something like that. That's not uncommon when there's going to be special effects. It's, it's it's actually quite. You have to just create whatever you need in your in your imagination. That's what you do. <laughs> that's that's perfect. It's you know, and you you said it. You know, the film didn't get that that cult status life, but these things you never know. These things come back, right? Like some. Sometimes they sit there for a long time on the shelf and people rediscover. I mean, here we are talking about it, you know, so uh, the the potential or the capacity for that, um, perhaps not not wasted yet. You know, people could be coming back to Jack Frost. Let's try. Well, we keep our fingers crossed. Uh, plus, <laughs> what is Hasbro? No, G.I. Joe. I'm looking to say uh, no. Action Man. Action, Action Man. Man. That was the name. <laughs> Action Man. That's a great name. Action Man franchise. Yeah, Action Man. Steven Action uh, Man Mandel. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Where is the picture, though? I want, I'm looking for, uh, they came up in, in Wikipedia, but I, that's because I typed it in. So, action, I'm going to look and see. Ty, yeah, if you've got, if we'll you've got go. Action yeah. Man, Action Man. See what happens if you type it in in Google and and the yeah. Um, I'll try and pull it up on the screen right here, actually, and people can can get a look at it here. Now wait a second. I see one that's uh, you don't want to. I don't want you to use that one. Um, <laughs> images, because uh, there's one uh, action man. And, oh, he's available on eBay. There he is um, with the beard. Action Man with the beard. Apparently with that was beard. he was commando. <laughs> I uh, see this one. Um, <laughs> let's see the one with the beard. Action the beard man and the leather beard. jacket. Or uh, uh, here, there he is. <laughs> there he is. That's him. <laughs> now, apparently that's that's him. That's what I looked like with my way back when when I had. Well, my hairpiece looked like it was my own. Looked like what would what I would have had if I'd kept my own hair. I can um, I can see this comparison. This actually yeah. is not. It, it definitely resembles you in the this one especially. Yeah, this this looks very much like you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got oh, some yeah. looks, and here we go. Winter sweater. I mean, that's it. 
That's the one with the sweater. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at the same thing. I'm looking at the same stuff. Um, oh, my gosh. Perfect. Action wow. man. Oh, my God. There was one where he's wearing a leather jacket. And uh, I, 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 the beard, the leather jacket, and uh, uh, I'm looking. I don't see it. Anyway, it was a, it was a, he had a, a leather jacket and a, and a, I don't know if he had a beret on, but uh, pistol, pistol belt. Oh, well. And if you ever, ever had an eye patch, I can already kind of see where they thought they were going with you in number two. Yeah. Oh, Lordy. Oh, yeah. Lordy. That would have been so, I swear that would have been the, the most fun thing. <laughs> But they didn't uh, get to it, so there you have it. Oh, well. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe there'll be a resurgence. Maybe three is not a... Uh, uh, we, uh, we, so you can get a hold of Michael Cooney. I mean, he has to write it. He's got to write it. Rob said he would come back. So I'll say, look, we've got Stephen and Rob. They're ready to return. Ready to, to go. <laughs> Absolutely. Just got to write I have it. Another, I have, a, I have an, a, another hair piece that, uh, that's got gray in it. So, uh, you know. <laughs> Um, Steven, it's been, I, I really appreciate, appreciate you coming on. I mean, yeah. having, having time with you any, at any portion of the night, it's, it's amazing. I really appreciate well, getting again. Please accept my apologies for screwing <laughs> up. Um, you know, stuff happens, I guess. It was a pleasure to, to, to meet you guys and to, uh, to, and to be on here with you. Of course. Of course. Thank you, Steven. I get, I'll pass your okay. info to Rob as well. Hopefully we can bring you guys please. back together. Please do. Thank you again. <laughs> All Thank right, bro. Steven. Good night. Easy. Good night. <laughs> Take care. Oh man, that's awesome. I, I, we were so close to hitting mm -hmm. wrap up on the show, and there, that was awesome. It's such a treat to get to talk to Steven. Wow, what an amazing show. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta outro us out again. I was so close to being done the last time. Amazing. Um, hey, everyone who watched, thank you for joining us. People in the chat, thank you for chiming in and. Uh, Hanging out with us. Thank you to Rob and Steven for uh, for showing up, talking Jack Frost, uh, an opportunity I, I imagine from the sounds of it doesn't come up often and may not come up again. So uh, wonderful to talk Jack Frost. Let's get that training. Let's get Jack Frost 3 made. Let's be the, the arbiters of the third Frost film. Um, thank you, Ghouls and Goblins, for joining us. Happy real days Connor, are you still going live for us? You betcha. All right, stick around for, for what? On Twitch, Connor, what, what do they need to stick around for? Playing Cyberpunk 2077 for the Ooh, first time. That's a big one. That's a huge, huge game. Yeah. We're excited for that. I'm excited for that. Been looking forward to Cyberpunk for a long time. Check it out. You can watch Connor craft his magnificent sci-fi sci dong. <laughs> I, that, I know. that's a, I don't really know. That is a thing. I will see. Honestly, all I'm excited for. Can you do can you, I, I get you. I'm like, can you even show that on Twitch? I don't know how graphic yeah, it is. Yeah, you can. I guess people have been. I'm sure many people have been streaming the game, right? So, yeah, it, I mean, it's part of the game. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? It's art. Um, <laughs> it's going to be art. You betcha. Yeah. Thank you for watching, guys. Um, if you're on Twitch, stick around because I, I very shortly sounds like we're going to go live back up right again. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead, switch on over to our Twitch. Um, that is twitch.tv slash W-A-T underscore real podcast. And you can check out Connor's gameplay for Cyberpunk 2077. And um, outside of that, have a great evening. Happy real days. We'll catch you on Thursday next week for Gremlins. Gremlins. Joe Dante's Gremlins. So that's going to be an awesome episode. I'm going to force Olivia to watch it. Wonderful. I would say I could force Jess, but I, it, I can't. I don't have the the ability or the power to make that happen. So <laughs> I'll be watching that by myself. I live um, with Olivia, so I'm just going to turn it on. I'm going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Hey, good night, ghouls and goblins. Stick around for cyberpunk, and we'll catch you next week. Stay spooky, my friends. Good night.